Jonah 1, 11 to 12. Underestimating Jonah? So far in our study of the book of Jonah, it's taken us a long time to get just 10 verses into chapter 1. And in verse 10, we discovered the sailors afraid, very afraid. Earlier than that, though, we've been focusing on the character of Jonah. We like our characters to be clear-cut. We like the heroes to be good and the villains to be bad. We prefer our heroes to be very good and our villains to be very bad. Real life isn't like that. Real people are enigmas wrapped up in conundrums and we unravel them and they continually surprise us. The Bible's like that too. So let's look at Jonah chapter 1 verses 11 to 12. But first let's remind ourselves who Jonah is and what we know about him from the first 10 verses. Jonah's a Paka prophet. We know that because he features in the books of Kings. Jonah is a Paka prophet running from God. But Jonah confesses that God is the maker of sea and land. Something doesn't compute. The sailors are terrified by the storm, but Jonah, the landsman, is fast asleep in verse 5. As this book unfolds, the more we read, the more we find that while Jonah's theology is 100%, his actions don't match. Jonah is indeed an enigma wrapped up in a conundrum. And in verse 11 and 12 of chapter 1, the enigma gets worse. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the seas may quieten down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Pronouns are often really important in biblical storytelling, in all storytelling, because the pronouns, by and large, carry the relationships and signal them. So let's look at the pronouns here, both the ones in the verbs and the ones elsewhere. They said to him, What shall we do to you? He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quieten down for you because I know it's because of me that this great storm has come upon you. You see what's happening? Faced with the blame in verse 11, they, him, we, you, us, Jonah the Pucker prophet, with 100% theology, takes responsibility and offers his life to save theirs. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you, says Jesus in John 15. It's Jonah and other Jesus, except they aren't his friends. They're foreign sailors. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die, said Paul in Romans 5. Verse 7. Are these sellers righteous? Not yet, they're pagans, each worshipping their own god. The sailors are afraid, very afraid. And Jonah offers his life to save them. Yep, we're 12 verses into the book, and the enigma of the conundrum of this prophet just gets deeper and deeper the more we read. It's a lovely book. Do read it. Bye for now.